Step 12. I can solve quadratic equations with a variety of methods. We're going to explore four main methods for solving quadratic functions, quadratic equations. The first method is graphing, which at Mercer Macaulay, that's our step 10. So we can consider that one already mastered, assuming that you mastered step 10 and you are comfortable graphing quadratics and looking at where they cross the y-axis. The second method will be factoring, followed by completing the square and the quadratic formula. And many students ask, why do we have to learn so many different ways? Why can't we just learn one way? Well, different situations demand different methods, and certain problems lend themselves to be solved easier by using a particular method over another. Let's start by taking a look at factoring. When we factor, and again, this takes us all the way back to step four. We're looking first for a greatest common factor, always. In this case, the greatest common factor, the biggest number I can divide them by is 8. They both have a factor of x. So by factoring, I'm left with 2x plus 1, because 8x over 8x is 1. And then to solve by factoring, we are simply going to set each side equal to zero and solve. So on the right side, I'd have to subtract one, two x equals negative one, divide by two, x equals negative one half. On the left side here, to get x by itself, I just divide by eight. Zero divided by eight is zero, so x equals zero. Those are my two solutions. Sometimes when we're factoring, um, we can look at most of the problems actually that we're going to have in step 12 are all going to be quadratic, but 2C here is a different example. So we might go over that one in class. You likely won't experience anything like that on the step 12 quiz though because it's not quadratic. Sometimes we have a quadratic function that's a quadratic trinomial. And to factor this, this is where we were using our x method, where we first ask ourselves, what is 1 times 64? And the answer is 64. Then we put this middle number in the middle on the bottom. And then finally, we put this leading coefficient right here. So we're trying to come up with factors of 64 that combine to give us 16. So 1 and 64, 2 and 32, 3 doesn't work, 4 and, oh, let's see, 16. 5 doesn't work, 6 doesn't work, 7 doesn't work, 8 times 8, and there are all the factors. The winning combination is 8 and 8, because when we put those in, 8 times 8 is 64, 8 plus 8 is 16. These give us our factors, so we end up with 1x positive 8, and the other factor is identical, 1x, positive 8. Again, they both equal 0, and we have to solve both of them. Spoiler alert, because they're the same, we're going to get the same answer for both of them, even on this side as I subtract 8. I end up with x equals negative 8. So that's my solution. When you're solving by factoring, you simply factor what you have before you and set each factor equal to zero and solve. Pause your video right now and try this next one here and see if you get the right answer. I'll get you started by setting it up here. Remember, we're looking for the product of 6 and 20, which is 120. The number that they combine to needs to be negative 23. 
and my leading coefficient is going to be 6. Were you able to get the two answers of y equals 4 thirds and y equals 5 halves? That is our correct answer. Our winning combination was negative 8 and negative 15, which I put into our x factor. Then I reduced the fractions, keeping the negatives on the bottom in the denominator. And from there, we formed our factors from these fractions, 3y minus 4, 2y minus 5. Let's go backwards now. Now we're going to take two roots, two solutions, two answers, and come back with a quadratic equation in standard form. What we started with here is a quadratic equation in standard form. We know it's in standard form because it goes down in degree. We have y squared, y, and then the constant, and all of the coefficients are integers. So that's our goal. So if you think about how we just did the last problem to get to 4 thirds and 5 halves, now we're starting with negative 1 third and 6 and working backwards. And I'm going to actually show you two different ways to do this type of problem. If these are the roots, then the factors that go with these roots, we just change the sign. x minus 6, and this one would be x plus 1 third. Because when I solve them by setting them equal to 0, I would get back to this answer. At this point, all I need to do is foil or box my answer, or my factors rather. So I have x, one third, x, negative six. When I multiply these, that's what I get. Feel free to use a calculator. Then we take these pieces out of the box. At this point, we do have some like terms here. Negative 6x and 1 3rd x are like. So I do need to combine them. And again, you can use a calculator. Negative 5 and 2 thirds or negative 17 thirds. Because another name for negative 6 is negative 18 thirds. Plus 1 makes negative 17. But the problem is we cannot have a fraction to be in standard form. So to eliminate that 3 in the denominator, I'm going to multiply the entire equation by 3. And then my answer will be 3x squared minus 17x. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. That's the answer. Another option, though, is very similar. We start off with these two roots, negative 1 third and 6, and we need to write the factors. Well, the factor when 6 is an integer is pretty straightforward. But another way to do this root going to have an x on the left. We're going to have a 3 next to the x from the denominator and a plus 1. And if you're not sure you believe that, try it off to the side. 3x plus 1 equals 0. We would subtract 1 and divide by 3, giving us that negative 1 third. From here, when you go right into your box, 3x, 1, x, minus 6, you end up with 3x squared plus x minus 18x minus 6. Taking these terms out of the box, these are still like, so I'll put them together to get negative 17x minus 6. You can see we get the exact same answer. So sometimes people prefer 
coming up with a binomial root with integer integer uh, coefficients. Other times people like to just change the sign and write the factor this way and then deal with the fraction at the end. It's your choice. Before we get into solving by completing the square, I wanted to talk to you about how we solve a problem like this. In order to solve x squared equals 25, Remember, to solve it means to get x by itself. We're just trying to get x by itself to get rid of this squared. And we take the square root to do that. We end up with x and always plus or minus when you take the square root of a number. The square root of 25 is 5. We could make it even more complicated. We could have something that looks like this. x minus 7 squared equals 36. Again, I'm still trying to get x by itself. So the first thing I do is take the square root of both sides, which leaves just x minus 7 on the left, and plus or minus 6 on the right. x is not by itself because of the negative 7, so I would add 7 to both sides. x would be 7 plus or minus 6, which we then would have to break apart. 7 plus 6, 7 minus 6, and our answer would be 13 or 1. The reason I mention that to you, sometimes you're going to have an expression like this that we're trying to solve. But that doesn't really fit the form. If I just start trying to take the square root, it's not going to work. Because what's under the square root there is a trinomial. As opposed to the last example, what was under the square root was something squared. x squared. x minus 7 squared. We need something squared. So the first thing I'll do, I'll take this trinomial and factor it. And it factors, I'm thinking, what multiplies to 9 and combines to negative 6? The answer is negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Negative 3 and negative 3 makes negative 6. And a faster way of writing this would be x minus 3, the quantity squared. Instead of writing something twice, you can just write it once and square it. Now to solve it at this point, I'm just taking the square root of both sides. I'm left with x minus 3 plus or minus 0, which we don't even need the plus or minus because it's 0. Finally, I would add 3 to both sides, and my answer is 3. But what happens when we have something that's not a not able to be factored so nicely like this. That does happen from time to time, uh, particularly down here in this next example as we scroll down in the notes. Right here, if I try to factor this, I would have x, I would have plus 6, and x minus 2. That cannot be rewritten as x and something squared because these are different. And if we're trying to use the square root property to solve this, we need to be able to write it that way. The reason we can't do that is because this number is not cooperating. We want to put a better number there so that I could rewrite this as x plus some number which would give me x plus some number squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is eliminate this problematic number 12 by adding it to both sides. Now I'm left with x squared plus 4x equals 0 plus 12 is 12. The rule is you're going to take half of b 
and square it. That's the magic number that we want to add to both sides. So I'm going to take half of 4 and square it and add it on both sides. Because what you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other. Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So I'll add it to both sides. Now, the right side simply becomes 16. The left side becomes x plus 2 times x plus 2, which I'm just going to write as x plus 2, the quantity squared. At this point, all I have to do is take the square root of both sides. Subtract 2 from both sides. So x is negative 2 plus or minus 4, which again we would split apart. We would have negative 2 plus 4, negative 2 minus 4. And we have our solution.